Hey guys, my name is Pixie, and this is a quick video covering everything you need to know about AP in Final Fantasy XV. Earning AP while playing Final Fantasy XV is easier than you think, but it will still take you a hot minute to unlock every option in the Ascension Trees. If you're familiar with the old saying, it takes money to make money, then you'll understand that spending AP to gain AP is the way to go. Essentially, you can earn AP for virtually every little task you're already doing while playing the game, but only if you spend the AP to unlock it. This video is going to cover the basic ways to earn AP and show you the nodes you need to unlock in the various ascension trees in order to maximize your AP gain. If you start the game focusing on specific nodes to unlock rather than putting points into combat for example, it will make your journey a lot easier and help you unlock more of the ascension trees much faster. You'll want to unlock these in the order that you personally would use them. So for example, you can gain AP while fishing, but if you don't really fish that often then you don't need to worry about unlocking that particular node right away. So let's get started. On the exploration menu, we have a few options that will help us earn additional AP. Spending 32 AP to unlock road running will give you 1 AP for every 1.25 miles that you drive. If you try to farm AP through auto driving from point A to point B, it's not worth your time and there are more efficient ways to farm for AP, but you might as well gain a handful of AP when you do need to auto drive. Always bear in mind that while auto driving, even during the daytime, you can be ambushed by enemies, so turn the sound on on your TV if you leave the room to grab a sandwich or something. Once you've gotten your chocobo, you definitely want to unlock Chocobump. If you spend the 32 AP to unlock this node, you will gain 1 AP for every 0.875 miles traveled while riding a chocobo. Much like the car, I don't recommend endlessly running around with your chocobo trying to amass AP, but since you spend a significant time traveling in the game via car or chocobo, you might as well gain the AP as you're exploring the world and completing quests. In order to level up in Final Fantasy XV, you need to spend the night either in an RV, a hotel, or a haven. To level up quickly, you always want to try to at least double your experience gain by visiting the hotel in Golden Key, for example, but there are occasions in which the game makes you sleep at specific locations, some of which are havens. You can earn up to 3 AP each time you make camp after unlocking both happy and happier camping. If you complete all 10 tours, this will earn you an extra 30 AP from the camp, but keep in mind it costs you 68 AP to unlock both nodes. So it might not be worth the trouble if you only spend the night at a camp when the game forces you to do so. I covered tours in my first video for this game, so feel free to watch that video if you need a little more information on the subject. You'll need to spend the night at specific havens to initiate the tours, but you'll earn 20 AP for each tour that you complete. There are 10 tours in the game for a total of 200 AP. You might have noticed a training option when you visit a haven. These become available as your team gets stronger, and they're a great way to practice fighting as Noctis. Completing a training exercise for the first time will reward you with 5 AP, and you can also earn additional AP during the fight by performing kill moves. Now, kill moves are how you earn the most AP. In my opinion, combat is the most efficient way to farm for AP in a short amount of time. Occasionally, your teammates will ask you to perform a specific action during combat for 1 AP, but these are few and far between. Try to complete the request, but don't expect to earn bucket loads of AP for doing this. Instead, you can earn AP if the last hit that you perform to kill an enemy is a warp strike, a blindside link, or a link strike. So what I like to do is find an area with a handful of mobs that I can one-shot and just warp strike, warp strike, warp strike, and end up with 8 AP in a total of 10 seconds or so. Try to fight in areas with warp points to replenish your MP so there's little downtime. If you try this early on, it's going to require a lot of legwork and running around the map, so I suggest waiting until you get the beast whistle. Using this whistle, you can stay in an area and resummon the monsters to fight. There's actually a better AP farming spot right at the entrance to Insomnia. The Imperials here are all level 3 to 6 with 2 mechs at level 17. So this area will give you an easy dozen AP, but the Beast Whistle doesn't seem to work on humanoids and certain really large monsters, so you can't continuously resummon for an AP farm. During normal combat, when you're not trying to farm for AP, you still want to perform a kill move to get the extra AP. If you have the wait timer enabled in the combat options menu, it will make things a lot easier. You can pause the game briefly and look for an enemy with low HP, then perform a kill move to add to your AP pool. So, as you can see, if you spend an hour or two farming, you'll be able to easily grab these nodes worth 333 AP apiece. This video would not be complete without listing every possible way to gain AP, so here's the complete list of all the different nodes you need to unlock in the Ascension menu. You can also find this list in the description below in case you need to recap. So here's my mock ascension menu. This represents the armager tree which you unlock during the main storyline pretty early on, usually around chapter 3. 
There are two nodes in this tree that cost 48 AP each. You gain 1 AP each time you conjure the armature, or 1 AP each time you unleash an armature chain. These nodes definitely pay off the more you use the armature, but as always, prioritize the nodes you want to unlock based off of your playstyle. So if you only use the armature during boss fights, you might not want to invest the 96 AP for both of these nodes. In the magic tree, unlock the magic action node for 24 AP. You will gain 1 AP every time you cast a spell, and I highly recommend picking this one up even if you don't use spells all that often. It's pretty cheap so you can pay it off in no time, but if you're not already aware of this, you can earn extra experience points using the debased items and rare coins if you craft them into your spells. So throwing a Thundara infused with Experimagic Magic at a Cactuar is going to give you massive amounts of experience points plus the additional AP. Lastly, the exploration tree is where you'll want to spend most of your points early on. Again, remember to unlock these nodes in the order that you would use them. It is not necessary to spend the points on nodes that give you an additional experience, at least not right away. Feel free to unlock experience nodes in whatever order you want. They're nice to have using the same concept as AP. You gain a little now, and it ends up over time. In no particular order, the nodes of interest are Chocobump and Road Running, which gives you AP while traveling by Chocobo or car, respectively. Choco Jockey will give you AP each time you win a Chocobo race. Appetize will give you 1 AP each time you cook a party member's favorite food. Aperture will give you 1 AP each time Noctis is featured in a photograph. If you enjoy fishing, pick up Angler Action and Sport Fishing, which will give you AP while fishing or extra AP depending on the fish you caught. Lastly, Happy and Happier Camping will give you up to 3 AP each time you make camp. Uh, so to wrap this up, if you're not aware of this, the choices you make during the dialogue will earn you experience for your entire party, experience for specific party members, AP, and sometimes items. You might earn one or two AP here and there for a dialogue choice, but you won't earn too much, so don't worry about saying the wrong thing. If you're really concerned about it, you can probably find all of the answers somewhere online, or you can look them up in a strategy guide if you've purchased one. I think that's pretty much it. Feel free to comment below if you found great farming spots you want to share or if I've left anything out. I want to make sure everyone's getting the correct information and the best way to do that is if we all collaborate together as a community. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.